This is Tim with Death by Metal MMB, and I'm talking to... Jeff Becerra, a singer-songwriter of Possessed. Awesome, definitely. Well, tell us about the new album. Um, how did you guys come up with the cover, come up with the name of the album, and, and uh, is it kind of a joint collective through everyone, or is it something individually done? Uh, well, I mean, well, I, I didn't get to ask, but what is the joint collective on the album cover? Well, the joint collective as far as making the album, is it something that you guys do all together, or is it individual um, people that create it? Yeah, I mean, it, it takes five of us to create it, but mm-hmm. the actual um, songwriting, I write all the lyrics and um, and uh, about half the music. It's me and Dan, uh, Danielle Gonzalez, my um, guitarist, mm-hmm. we're like the, the co-writers of the, you know, the, the vast majority of the uh, the. Uh, the uh, the content, but we do have a couple songs where, um, you know, everybody, uh, Emilio, Dan, uh, Emilio Marquez, our drummer, our bass player, Robert Cardenas, our, our Daniel Gonzalez, and me all wrote like 0.5% of a couple of the songs, but, but, and there are some that Dan, Daniel Gonzalez wrote the music, and I wrote the lyrics like just 50 50, and then, you know, like, the, uh, you know, then, like, um, like I said, fifty percent of the music comes from my guitar. I make up these little uh, packets of like seven to twelve riffs, like a little package, and I'll email them to Dan. And Dan, being a fantastic guitarist, will sew them together, uh, uh, along with the drum machine and the solos, and email them to Robert, who will use the software to punch in bass. And email to Claudius, who will use the software to punch in the solos, and then. Um, We'll, Dan will fly down and mic up a movie of those drums and replace the electronic drums with real drums. Then I'll fly to my house, we'll set up a windscreen and a vocal mic in my basement, a little studio, and I will sing the vocals. And everybody's very involved. And that's how we do, like, the pre album. We call it a demo, but that's essentially our scratch tracks that we use as the foundational tracks for the actual album. So, Okay, cool, definitely. Um, when you guys first started the band... Uh, till now, is there some highlights that you guys want to talk about or what you want to talk about personally that's kind of affected your music career? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a long road. I mean, we started off in late 82, or we were torn by 83. And, uh, you know, it's been, um, it's been a lifetime of death metal, basically. I mean, essentially, though, uh, possessed in many respects is a continuation. Uh, more than 50% of it um, started uh, from my first band, Blizzard, because in 1979, I met up with Larry Lalonde, and uh, and that's when we started writing and creating music together when we were kids, you know? Right. And then so when me and Larry, uh, yeah, I went back, of course, whenever I start, started Possessed, I went back and got Larry to make up more than half the band from ex-Blizzard, so, you know, me doing double duties on bass and vocals, Larry playing all the rhythms and the solos on the album, so, and writing, you know, a lot more and more so but yeah so you know since i've been 11 years old i've been in a metal band and you know it's just been you know it's my career it's my life it's it's more than you know just it's you know as an artist it's just been you know a, a great life so far so absolutely um who who comes up with the album artwork does it change every time or um is it a process that you guys do all together well, no, um, not at all. What I wanted to, to represent is, you know, the foundation, you know, because I owe, even though we were together just like four years or whatever, the first round, I still owe those guys a lot, you know, because, you know, they're, we got our start, we blew up together, and um, even though, you know, it was very culty back then, it's a different world now possesses, and, it, you know, we've, we've stepped forward into the future, but I wanted to respect the past. Our original Seven Churches artwork was declined. It was actually a cathedral, a satanic, like, cathedral, like a Catholic kind of cathedral with, you know, pentagram stained glass windows. And, right. Uh, you know, upside down crosses. And we had this woman hanging from a chain of so this gnarly oak tree in the front with, a like, a demon owl holding the chain and the gravestones with our names on them. And that was the original Seven Churches, um, you know, we call it the Eighth Church, uh, uh, but that was declined in uh, the, the all black with the possessed logo. Thank God, though. I mean, because that we got a lot of play out that very simplistic and powerful, you know, 
those like our marquee, you know. And so um, I wanted to revisit the past, but bring Possessed also into 2019. So we went back to that original idea and um, kind of got the best artist we could find to do it. Because churches are really hard not to look corny, you know. Right. So we got a really great artist, and um, I can't say his name. I call him Z. He did all the, the ghost covers, and I think he did Creator and Sepultura. He did a bunch of uh, album covers, but I met up with him, and we talked and talked and talked for for years and we planned it and then uh, we just kind of wanted to remix the old with the new and revisit and and move forward and bring possessed not only a band of the past but a band of the past the the, the today and, and the future you know? right you um there's a book there's probably many books out but there's a book that i personally own called murder in the front row um uh, yeah. it's something that when when I go through the book, and I often go through that book a lot, and and I I, tr- I find something new every time I do. Um, what was it like? What was your experience like when you first started out? I mean, obviously you guys had no idea that it was going to be this big. Um, but who were some of your friends as far as like other bands? I mean, were you friends with Metallica? Were you friends with any of these groups or Harold Omen or any of these guys? Um, yeah, I mean, it, Harold was our photographer. He went on a tour with us. He went to Europe with us. He broke his legs in Europe with us during a, like a riot. He he would go. He went on the Slayer tours with us because uh, we, you know, a lot of people don't know we we toured our first two major um, U.S. tours were with Slayer, uh, with the, the Show No Mercy slash Seven Churches, and the Haunting the Chapel slash uh, Beyond the Gate. So we did two tours. The tour started out with Venom Slayer and Possessed at the SF Kabuki. And yes, we were very much friends with all the local uh, Bay Area thrash bands and uh, metal bands, you know, from Metallica. We used to party up at the Possessed House, uh, Possessed Mansion, and we'd party at the, the Hell House, which was uh, the Metallica Mansion. I, I grew up right around the corner from Kirk Hammett. I used to ride my skateboard to his house. Really? And, uh, so we were, you know, a lot of us lived in Austin Brandy from Les Claypool and Primus to, to the, some of the Exodus guys and Tom Hunting and I both went to De Anza High School in Austin Brandy and, and uh, you know, um, Kirk lived there and, uh, you know, we all, Larry lived there and I lived there, Green Day lived there, they were like the, the, the younger kids that would skateboard around us and it, there was just a lot of, you know, from Outrage, which was the pre-Exodus band and to God, just it was like a mecca. You know, the Bay Area was a mecca for so many different bands. Uh, you know, um, uh, Dave Godfrey used. I think he dated Kirk's. You know, from Heathen dated Kirk's sister back then, so they were living right. in the same house. And uh, you know, the Blind Illusions and Mark Biedermans and you know, a bunch of us were from Australia. I don't know why Australia was that kind of. You know, a Y and T was from I think Benol and. Uh, the great Kin Man, remember them? They were down in the yeah. Valley. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, of course, George Cole and Josh Atchinghetti were down in the Valley giving lessons at uh, Fiat Music. And I could go on and on. Danny Jones, uh, just a whole bunch of people. I was like, everybody was trying to have a friendly competition and one up. It felt like a revolution back then, man. And we were all friends, all very tight. The legacy, the, the, you know, testament to. Dark Angel, Death Angel. Dark Angel was from LA, but Death Angel, very much, um, they were a little bit younger than us and would play at Ruthless with us all the time. And, uh, uh, you know, and then of course, that when, when Slayer opened up LA, because until Slayer, mm-hmm. the area in LA would have been never mixed because we thought everything was poser from LA. And it, it was just like, it was like we, we hated LA, but then. I remember uh, Gary Holt one time, he was like, you got to check out this band from L.A. I know, Land of Posers, but you really got this is a real deal. They're called Slayer. And, um, and you know, we, you know, of course, we've been playing at Ruthie's every weekend. And right. So when Slayer first came down to Ruthie's, everybody showed up from James and Metallica. And everybody was there. It was the craziest Ruthie show. And uh, that really opened up the gates to all things L.A. And once... Once um, that was open up because they were fucking awesome, and uh, and then we started you know t- uh, mixing up with like the Megadeth, the Corrosion, uh, Megadeth, DRI, Corrosion, Conformity, 
That's, I, I tried to talk, Death Angel was last night, um, they were with Overkill, and I've always, I, I've had them sign, I, I tried to sign, I tried to have everyone sign the book, obviously that's never going to happen, but I have as many peoples as I can, if you came to St. Louis, I would bring the book, even if I didn't have tickets, I'd bring the book and try to get a hold of you to, to have you oh, sign yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, I'm down with that, and I gotta, I gotta remember Machine Head was from here, um, Yep. Yeah. The thing the thing that I asked, you know, I think that I asked Bobby Blitz last night, I said, how long did it take before you guys had like a studio album? Because when I talked to um, I think when I talked to Dave Elfson about Megadeth, when when Dave Dave Mustang was kicked out of Metallica and he released Killing as my business, he said it would and even Harold would back it up. He said probably six, probably six months. He goes, he had that album done and, and had it had it going. And I said, was it easier back then to have um, to to get on a re- record label? And he goes, well, record labels weren't that big back then. And he goes, nothing, everything was new, like possessed was new. That's a new thing. Slayer was new. Everything's new. Um, how was your take on that? And what was that like when you first got the recording um, and, and got a got on a record label? Do you did you guys think it was big, or did your life change overnight? like 79 copies of our demo that that shit spread like wildfire right uh it was loose like the barrier is a tough audience the u.s market is a tough audience but it took off really well i think the musicians got it a lot before the press i mean we were ever fighting for death metal it felt like a revolution we kept saying death metal death metal and people kept associating called slayer clones or whatever a lot of people don't know that we wrote seven churches before we ever even heard slayer so so, I mean, the, back then it was in vogue to deny death metal as a true art form and just call it thrash or speed metal or whatever. Right. So, so in the, you know, when we first started playing, you know, live, you know, people would turn their backs on us or laugh or just didn't understand. It was just too much for some people. So that was a kind of a struggle. But, but we put out our demo. Uh, Brian Slagle signed us for Metal Massacre 6. We did the uh, Swing of the Axe for that. That kind of blew us up and got interest with combat. And I mean, I mean, from the time I joined Possessed, within nine months we were signed. I went back and got Larry and Debbie, uh, Debbie Bono for our manager and guitarist. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know we had um, Brian Montana with us. And then for whatever reasons he left, and we I went back and used that opportunity to get my old buddy Larry back because you know. You know, me and Larry, you know, we grew up together. I'm really comfortable with him. And then we got Debbie, and, and then it all kind of blew up. You know, within nine months, we were signed after, you know, I started Possessed. So it went really like a mile a minute. Right. You know, then we started touring and getting, you know, Slayer was kind enough to let us on their tours. And the uh, Slayer album actually beat us to the punch, even though I think we had written ours first. But they beat us to the presses, and Slayer was phenomenal. They blew up overnight. Right. It, it seemed like overnight. And so um, that gave us a lot of play. Uh, I, I guess it went pretty relatively fast. It just, you know, when you're 16, it just seemed normal. You know, like, um, of course, you know, all the excesses and, and, and partying, you know, the girls and the drugs yeah. and lifestyle that came with it. That was, that was also fun. But I just... You know, I thought that's what happened, you know? So um, it wasn't that much of a struggle. We, to, to be quite frank, we didn't give a fuck about all that. We just wanted to go out and rock out, you know? Right. And to create our vibe and to try to further the cause of our, our new brand of death metal, you know? Right. From the first album to the newest album that you have now, coming out now, what is your favorite song to play? Well, I haven't played... A, a, we're in June. We're going to play the new songs for the first time live. A lot of them, but we have played like Shadow Cold, Abandoned, and um, and um, and uh, well, let me see. The, the, I think I like I like probably like Fallen Angel is a really fun one, right? Because it's just kind of driving heavy beat. And uh, I think on the new album, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, songs like Ritual and Demon. And uh, there's a lot of them. You know, I like them all. We, you know, I'm just just happy to still be up there and, and 
have people having interest in you know these albums that you know it's been 33 years since my last album so it's kind yeah. of it's crazy and fantastic that there's still an interest in possessed and i think a lot of that has to do with possessed being the very first you know the creators of death metal so I think so. A lot of a lot of people. I, I hate calling things genre or whatever like that because when I was a kid, it was always thrash metal. Everything was thrash metal. I mean, it was death metal. You you had bands like Death and 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 you and whatever. But nowadays, it's it's black metal and it's progressive metal. And all this other crap. I've heard people call possessed black metal, and I'm like, I don't think I don't think they're black metal. But um, does that? Would you take it? Is that something that you're comfortable with, or is it something that you're like, no, we're death metal. This is what we are. No, we're death metal. This is what we are. I agree um, completely. Of course, you know you're going to take it. You're going to. We take a lot of a derivative of black metal, and I think a lot of the OG black metal bands, you know, respect us for that because you know we do put some, you know, you know, you know, it's a lot of people are just like, oh, it's that same old tired scene thing, right? Yeah. But to us, it's like meat and potatoes, you know, we like that shit, that's what we blew up on, that's what we grew up on. You know, back in the day, it had a lot of shock value, and now today, you have to be a little bit more introspective and kind of correlate it with, you know, what's the real, and what's, you know, I'm trying to, you know, spin it in different ways, and write lyrics that people might understand differently depending on who they are and you know a lot of twists and hidden meanings and dual entendres and so yeah i mean i i identify as a death metal is kind of a mix between you know thrash without that happy backbeat and uh and black metal and it you know everything is foundational but death metal in and of itself, I think, has unique properties that, that a person like me can tell a, a death metal band right off the bat. But I think um, I think the, the press and the media sometimes has problems differentiating, you know, between that. And uh, all I can say is that thrash has a more bouncy, happy backbeat. Right. Death metal doesn't have that. So. Right. How come the long layoff? What's that? How come the long layoff? From eighty six to two thousand nineteen, you still you had live albums of what two thousand four, and some compilations come out. But I mean, as far as like a studio album, uh, well, the long wintering came from you know um, getting shot twice and having to recover from that. I ended up the way that I got my soul back was going to college, and then of course I you know fell in love and had two beautiful kids, and I needed to get my spirit back before I could really get back into the game because. You know, it's like if you're starving, hungry, you're not going to be reading, you know, books and trying to better yourself. And if your, like, soul is crushed with catastrophic injury, you have to bounce back from that before you're able to be creative as an artist. And, you know, it was 17 and a half years before I got back in. And it, it, it seemed like a minute. And I was, believe me, I was struggling and working every day to get back. So That's, well... I, I have something in common with you um, as far as getting shot. I, I was shot twice here in uh, St. Louis in 2016 um, yeah. by drive-by shooting. Uh, I was working security at a venue, and, and uh, um, it, it's it's kind of a coping mechanism. I, I, like, I'll talk about it, but um, people don't understand. I, I got a lot of slack over it because I just couldn't let go. Um, but I got shot twice in the leg and, and, um, it's something that, uh, the PTSD, I tell everyone, it's like, you know, I survived the shooting, but, uh, it's the PTSD that comes later. And, and I don't think people realize the, the amount of damage with mental awareness and things like that, that, that people have to cope with. Um, you know, yeah, PTSD comes from when you, you just, you basically break, you snap and then uh, the, the repercussions of that can be. Yeah, they say it takes you know between a year and a half and three years to get over. Yeah, but with me it took five years. You know, so yeah, it's it's starting. It's my third year and it's starting to go away a little bit. Um, I I bring it's it up. Away, believe me. Oh yeah, and well, I hope to God it does because still the nightmares and things like that that happens. But um, it's kind of it's it's like you know I was talking to Bobby Blitz last night and he had some medical or medical issues and and we had some st- stuff in common with that and he just basically says you know he he told me he's like every everybody's got their own cross to bear, um, and he goes you either yeah, we all have our highs and lows you know absolutely I mean, it doesn't take being shot I mean everybody has something in common when it comes to stress factors and and their personal highs and lows and. I think that 
people can really identify with the extremes, you know, like getting shot and stuff, because it kind of puts things in perspective. And, and at the same time, it shows how uh, similar we all are. You know? it, it is. And it's something that I think, um, I think people need to, to be aware of that because I mean, it doesn't matter if you get shot or whatever, like you just said, I mean, um, people have mental issues and, and people have mental illness and, and it, it can be from a bad, you know, a bad relationship to a car crash. It doesn't matter. Um, but at the same degree, well, more important is you can get over that stuff. I mean, exactly. Like you, can't tell, you can't tell at the time when you're going through it that, you know, like I, you know, essentially I have like what I call the dark years, the five dark years where I, see, I didn't deal with it well at all. I essentially tried to kill myself with, uh, drugs and alcohol and, and, uh, you know, after a while, I was like, well, fuck this. You know, I got to get busy living or get busy dying. So right. that's when I, my way out was to go to junior college and later on to, uh, to regular college at university. So. What do you guys... What do you guys have in store for the new album? Are you guys going on a big tour coming up? What's what's going to take place? Well, we have several um, pre-killer tours that we're looking at in the uh, United yeah, States, which I'm not allowed to... I don't want to clear the deal, but... Oh, right. Wow. And, uh, and, but for sure, we're going to um, Europe in this June, and uh, that's going to be exciting because there's a lot of club shows as well as... Um, as um, as um, a lot of club shows, as well as uh, you know the bigger festivals. So it's going to be. I like the smaller shows, you know, um, and I like the festivals. But if I play too many festivals, I feel like, oh man, I'm selling out. So I, I like <laughs> to play the smaller ones because right. that's like my home. That's where I grew up. You know, right. And, and you can also read you know, the crowd because you you you're able to read the crowd and see what 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 works and what doesn't work a lot easier. Right, I am. I am severely excited. Uh, hopefully, you come to St. Louis, Missouri. Hopefully, you come to St. Louis or, or even close to it. Um, I would love to be able to, to see you guys live and, and to meet you in person. Um, two last questions, and and I want to take up most of your time. Um, what was the very first metal album you ever bought, um, and and what was the very first metal concert you ever went to? Wait, maybe it won't. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Was it Heaven and Hell, Kiss, or Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Blackfoot? I think it might have been Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Blackfoot. And that's when um, Motley Crue got booed off the stage, but we were there for crew. That was uh, when I think that um, Tommy Lee was like 16. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Like, um, uh, and then, uh, of course, I went to Kiss back in the 70s with the Black Sabbath, whatever the heaven and hell was. I uh, think, but, I don't know what year that was. Neither do I. We were kids. But surprisingly enough, I haven't been to that many major big concerts unless I'm playing them, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that, those were big events for us back then. We go to the SF Cal Palace, and but you know, soon after that, you know, like I say, I, I wrote "Burning in Hell" when I was 11 years old, so wow. I, I went dark really fast. And so the club scene is where I really, you know, got my rocks off. That's where I really felt, you know, that desire to, is to go to the, the SF Bay Area underground and and uh, you know, watching uh, bands like Exodus. And, yeah, we, uh, you know, I, I grew up worshiping Exodus, just like fucking punching Gary Solo, and just like, oh, Gary, old God, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Did you... So, I, I've got more questions. i got time. I'm going to ask them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> all right. Did you, were you, when, did you see Exodus with Kirk Hammett? Uh, yeah. No, no. I was around. Let me see. Did I see him? Because, you know, the current used to be an outrage, and outrage kind of morphed into Exodus. Okay. And so, um, and Exodus, like some of the Exodus riffs actually made it onto the Metallica album, so. Right. Um, um, I was listening to them. Oh, my God, did I see them? I, I may have that Ruthie's cut. I vaguely remember that. So... 
Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing Metallica pre Kill 'em All too, and uh, yeah, I, I I know that I was listening to Whipping Queen, and and uh, you know, I can't recall. I, I believe I did though. Because I was like, I was always wondering, because I, I met Jeff Hanneman one time here in St. Louis, Missouri. I was probably like five feet away from him. And he's my favorite yeah, guitarist. He was super, he was super cool. And I, when I was talking, to, I, I was interviewing uh, uh, Ullman. I was, uh, Harold, I was interviewing him. And all I was talking about was asking questions of the of what he was doing. And he goes, you know what? He goes, I'd rather you ask me questions of that than DRI. Um, he goes, because that's part of history. That's part of the metal history. But um, did you have a chance to meet Cliff Burton? Did you have a chance? To, and, uh, yeah, yeah, he was good friends with Cliff. He was good friends with all the guys. Did Yeah, I mean, I, I remember watching Venom play with Cliff Burton. We were smoking a joint up in the nosebleeds after um, um, Possessed. We played with you know, the Possessed uh the, the Venom Center of Possession at the SF Kabuki and, and we I went up and saw Cliff and we were smoking a joint and, and, and we were like what song is Venom playing and, and Cliff said man I think they're drunk man and I said yeah but it's fucking Venom and he's like yeah so we sat there watching it and smoking and he's like I think they're playing Countess Bathory because that down 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 and I was like yeah you could be right and then uh Chris like, uh, hey, can I have your backstage laminate? Because I want to go backstage. I was like, sure, sure. And so then when I went to go backstage, they, they I didn't recognize me. And they didn't let you back. <laughs> but they did eventually threw a fit. And, and, uh, and so yeah, but yeah, they used to come up to the possessed house and party. Oh my god, we had some fucking crazy parties up there. I mean, and uh, drinking Everclear and oh just, wow, oh my god. Do you still? <laughs> Huh? Do you still do you still communicate with them at all as far as like Metallica or Slayer or do you still talk to them or is it? No, I mean they're all huge rock stars now. You know? I'm still yeah. very much culty underground. So I just, but, it, but I mean I, I do hear from Kirk Hammett kind of by proxy. Yeah, you know, Gerardo Martinez and Duke Blast like uh, Kirk tried to buy, buy a possess one of the possess shirts the other day and we just uh, Gerardo gave him one and um, also. From what I hear is um, Kirby was kind of instrumental in getting possessed signed to Nuclear Blast because he was joining conversation with the you know the president of Nuclear Blast USA Gerardo Martinez said that Kirk said well now all you have to do is get possessed uh, on Nuclear Blast and you'll be a complete label. Wow. And so he did put in a really kind word for us and uh, you know of course you know I will always love uh, Metallica. And, in the Exodus and Slayer, because you know, they essentially opened up extreme metal for where you know it showed the industry that you know there, there's something here, and, and it made it to you know it blew it up. So and hopefully, you know, I played my own part at my own small way. But right. Hey, did you know? Um, just as a fact, uh, and we're in the front row. Um, the, there's a, a picture in there where Tom Moray is playing a Red Destroyer bass. Yeah. That's my base. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we were we had played Lemoore's. We played once with Megadeth and we headlined there. We played a few times there. But the night we were headlining, then uh, Rick Rubin and Slayer came in and I think the Beastie Boys were there. Yeah, they were there. And uh, they came in and uh, Rick Rubin came up to me and said, um, you know, uh, Slayer just got out of the studio. And Slayer was drunk, man. They were all happy in a good mood. And, you know, fucking, it was cool to see them. And uh, not drunk in that way. We were all drunk. All right. But it was fun, you know. And um, and and Rick said, hey, can uh, Slayer use your equipment, possess equipment? Because they have this new song called Jesus Saves. And this will be the first time they play it on stage. I remember um, my guitarist, Mike, was like, he takes me off the side. He's like, fuck that, possess his headlining. And, and we should be the headliner. So I... We lined over to Rick and I said, fuck yeah, here's our shit, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I love fucking blue. So, the, so they went up and they played, the first time that Slayer played Jesus Save was on Possessed Equipment. At, at wow. The Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to look that picture up. I remember that picture, um, and, and I'm going to look it up and whatever, but... Dude, you have no idea how much this means to I me. Mean, I could sit and, and and just ask stupid questions for hours upon end. Um, there are no stupid questions. 
it's it's you guys you are part of of metal history and i don't give a shit what anyone says you are part of metal history and this has to be um one of my highlights I, i've talked to a lot of musicians that i've grown up with you know destruction with you know uh, a lot of people that i've envied but you're one band that i was always a fan of and uh, it's something that 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 I, I really hope that you're able to come to st louis and i'm really hoping that you're able to uh play even close to st louis i think it would be an absolute shame if you guys don't touch the city somehow um and and but i i wish you nothing but the best of luck the new album is phenomenal uh what's the name of the new album revelations of oblivion if when it comes out you have to have it everybody has to have this album and and like i said before um it's just it's it's just an amazing thing and when i found out that you guys are coming out with a new album i had to get an interview i had to see about talking to you and and sometimes and i don't i don't really think of it because i've done so many interviews but i'm very very lucky to be able to have a conversation with people like you um because again you're part of my childhood and you're part of me growing up and you're part of me um doing things i i used to i used to uh, skateboard with a sam mcgill and i had a possessed shirt you know and, and listen to suicidal tendencies and slayer and metallia i used to do all that stuff back in the day and and uh um you know i'm, I'm 47 years old and, and i'm not that old but i still do it today i don't give a shit you know and and uh but like i said before your music was something that it, it helped me in my life and and i listened to it and it was part of my childhood and and it got me through some really shitty times um because music was the place for me to go to escape well that's what i like to hear i mean that's why we do what we do it's definitely not for the money it's be i'd rather be happy than be rich and for to hear somebody here you say that that means everything because I mean, that to me, you know, death metal and, and possess is, is we're, we're ultimately there to, to, to uh, you know, score as the sounds, make people happy or rock out, you know, bring some flourish to life, you know, to try to be a part of the soundtrack of their life. And, Absolutely. And so it really matters, you know, thank you. Tim, you're, you're, that's amazing, that's, that's cool, man, thanks. It's, and that's the thing about it is, is that I don't, you know, it, it's, it's I, I try to tell everybody that, you know, I talk, I told Shmir the same thing, and, I've told you know Dave Elfson the same thing and and I, I, awesome, Dave Smear Elfson. is fucking amazing. He was just he was he, we talked more about food than we did anything. Um, it, it's just it's something that this is part of my childhood. And last night when I was talking to Overkill, my young my girlfriend's way younger than me, way younger. Um, and, and she just like stood there and just all of like me, like a, you know, I was like a high school kid talking to Bobby Blitz and, and, uh, yeah, he's cool. I saw them at the stone in uh, San Francisco. Absolutely. They were touring with the, they had a Brazilian health angel with them. We were rocking out and just, I threw, I didn't know what to do. So I threw on my baseball cap and he put it on. I was like, yeah, <laughs> he, he was very cool. I've talked to him before. I've, I'll text him every once in a while and, um, it's just, and the death angel guys are very cool. And then I just, yeah, that's fucking awesome. it just, it, it's just part of, you know, when, when I hear a band, like they're going to retire, I understand like Slayer said, Hey, we're going to quit, but you know what? They don't really quit. Um, the one I'm worried about is King diamond. I haven't seen him in a long ass time. Um, and I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I hope, I hopefully he makes one more album at least. And it, it, I'll retire when I'm dead. You know, and that's that's what Ozzy's doing, and and I tell people all the time, it's like I don't know if that guy's gonna make it through 2019, but if he does, he does. But I'm not going to be sad. I'm gonna be sad when he goes, but at the same degree, it's not too soon. He's lived a fucking phenomenal life through a lot of shit that a lot of people probably wouldn't survive. Um, yeah. So it, it just you have to take the good with the bad, and you have to be whatever. But again. Thank you for making the new album, and and I'm gonna try as much as I can uh, to get as much as I can from you guys, purchase wise. But you know, I'm not rich and rich and rich. But um, just do as much as I can because being a fan the way I am, and and uh, uh, I want you guys to be around for a while. I mean, it's it's. Thank it, you, Trevor. I hope to get out. Uh, yeah, I wanna, I want I want people to remember me. In order to do that, I need to put out a lot more music. So I'm not done yet. And no, I please don't I be done. Please don't. So hopefully you get to St. Louis, and and if you are not going to St. Louis, um, you've got my phone number. I do book yeah, bands. 
you you've you've got you 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 know I do book bands. Please get a hold of me and feel like, hey, is there a one off that we can come through St. Louis, dude? I'll pay All for right. it. I got you. We can right, we can I'll get in there. So, but um, take care. Thank you for doing the interview, and Thank and you, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in the new album through Nuclear Blast. Is phenomenal. All right, store my number. You can call anytime, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Too. All right, take care. Bye. Oh, yes.